Welcome back to Logic 101. I'm William Spaniel. And this lecture kicks off our introduction to logical fallacies, beginning with affirming the consequent. In logic, there are two different types of logical fallacies, informal and formal. Informal is the mushier of the two. These are unconvincing arguments. There are many different categories of informal fallacies. Ad hominem is one of them. Ad hominem is an attack against the source of an argument rather than an attack against the argument itself. For instance, if Donald Trump were to say that Logic 101 is the worst class in the history of mankind, and I responded by saying, Donald Trump, you're an idiot, then I will have just committed an ad hominem fallacy. That's because I attacked the source, Donald Trump, the person, he's an idiot, rather than attacking the argument. If I really want to address Donald Trump's point in this case, I need to be pointing out the virtues of Logic 101 rather than the flaws of the person making the argument. Formal fallacies, in contrast, are a bit more solid. These are examples of people unable to properly do a proof. Affirming the consequent falls into the second category. It's essentially screwing up modus ponens. You remember our old friend modus ponens, right? Modus ponens has two premises, an implication, P implies Q, and the antecedent of the implication being true. Given those two pieces of information, you can conclude that the consequent is true. Affirming the consequent screws this up, though. It swaps that second premise, P. Rather than having it be the antecedent, it makes it the consequent, and it uses that information to conclude that the antecedent, P, is true. We call this affirming the consequent because we have Q as the consequent in the implication on line one, and in line two, we affirm it by saying that it's true. But as it turns out, this is a logical fail. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. If you have this information, you can't conclude anything about P. P may or may not be true. And I can prove this to you with a very simple picture. You remember this, right? This is our visualization of modus ponens. P implies Q. Notice that P is entirely inside of Q, so if you're inside of P, you're definitely inside of Q. Affirming the consequent then says that Q is true. What do we know about P given that Q is true? Not much. Both of these dots are inside of Q. One is inside of P, one is not. Just because we know that Q is true doesn't allow us to say anything about whether P is true. Maybe some verbal arguments will help you understand this point a little bit more clearly. Think about this argument. Does it make sense? If you are a stupid person, you do stupid things. You do stupid things. Therefore, you are a stupid person. This has the same logical structure as affirming the consequent, but it's not right. For example, I myself like to think that I'm a pretty smart individual. I have a PhD, I have a good job, I do these courses, and yet I do stupid things all the time. You should have seen me playing Mario Kart yesterday, it was a disaster. But just because I do stupid things, that doesn't make me a stupid person. You can be a smart person and do stupid things as well. This means that you have affirmed the consequent. Being someone who does stupid things does not imply that you are a stupid person. So please don't take it to heart when someone points out that something that you do is stupid. They don't necessarily mean that you yourself are stupid. Lots of smart people do stupid things. It's fine. Trying to stay topical, here's another good one. If you won Powerball, you are rich. You are rich. Therefore, you won Powerball. Does that make sense? Not really. There are many different reasons why an individual could be rich, and very few of them having to do with winning the Powerball lottery. You might be rich because you own a company. You might be rich because you won Mega Millions, a different lottery. Who knows? Just because you were rich, we can't conclude that you won Powerball based off of that information. Here's one last one. And I bring this one up because if you watch Sunday morning news shows, there's a guaranteed chance... It's not a chance at all if it's guaranteed, right? 100% certainty that you're going to encounter an example of affirming the consequent during the hour of television that you watch. Here's one example of this. If Mr. Politician is doing a good job, unemployment is low. Unemployment is low, therefore Mr. Politician is doing a good job. 
Well, just because unemployment is low doesn't necessarily mean that the politician is doing a good job. It could be the case that unemployment is low for a completely different reason, and the politician has just gotten very lucky. The politician may be, in fact, doing a very terrible job and has lucked out and gotten unemployment to be low anyway. So just because that we know that the consequent is true doesn't allow us to understand that the antecedent is true as well. This is something that you should watch out for, as I said, because you will see politicians make these sorts of arguments all the time, and they simply don't work out. They are the inability to do modus ponens correctly. All right, that wraps up this lecture. I hope you enjoyed learning about affirming the consequent, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.